good morning from Vero Beach, Florida. So I've been down here for the last week uh, installing, upgrading the system in my client's RV. He invited us to come down here and mooch dock in his driveway. More on that later. So this is his building behind us. Nice building to be able to work off. Very spoiled this last week with being able to work inside, having concrete to work on instead of normally working on the ground or the grass. It's been very nice. So previously he had a system installed. It's been working well. He's got 2000 watts up on the roof. Um, he's got the Victron solar charge controllers. Uh, he's got 600 amp hours of lithium battery. And then he also had a Xantrax inverter that came with the coach. And so he was wanting to replace that Xantrax with a Victron inverter. And after talking to him about specifics of what he's, his goals, his needs, uh, we settled on two multi-plus inverters because it is a 50 amp rig and we wanted to be able to invert the whole coach. So we'll go inside here in a second and I'll show you uh, where, what was installed, where it was installed, and how I made his system better, but also safer and more reliable. So let's go on in and take a look. All right, so I'm inside his garage now, and behind me you can see is his, it's a 2007 Newmar All-Star, and it's actually a mid-engine diesel because in the back is actually a side load toy hauler. So one of the challenges that this presented for me at least is there's not a lot of under bay storage of where to put two multipluses. So let me show you where it got put. This was the customer's suggestion and actually looking at the RV of what was available, it actually was the best option. It was very tight, but we crammed them in there and we got it to fit. Let me show you. All right, so coming along the, this is the passenger side. And so coming along, you got a bunch of bays down here. Now this bay right here in the middle is where the multi-plus. So already if you look at the size of the door, you can tell there's not gonna be much space. All right, so coming in close here, you can see I was able to, I guess you could say shoehorn two multi-plus twos into this bay. And yes, customer knows that this one here, in order to service, this one has to come out. It was the nature of the beast with trying to get both of them to fit here, as well as having our two load centers over here. So what are these guys here? So with a 50 amp rig, you've got two hots, a neutral, and a ground. And so what you got to do is you got to take those two hots and split one hot to each uh, inverter with a neutral on the ground. So the power comes into this one and then it gets split out to each inverter with a neutral on the ground. And then what this one does is kind of the reverse is it takes the two hots from the inverters and combines them back together with a neutral on the ground and sends it to the breaker panel box. So that is why we have these two load centers and why they're important. It's splitting and then it's combining the power for the RV. So these again, these are 3000 VA, so 2400 watt uh, multi pluses. And then I put a Lynx distributor down here to connect it all. So the question might be is, well, here are the inverters, but where are the batteries located? So let me show you. All right, so coming along this way alongside the RV is the battery bay. And it's this one right here. So down below we have the chassis batteries and then we have our lithium house bank. So this coach, the 12 volt side and everything is running off of this lithium bank. What I have done is I've gone ahead and I've split the bank into two. So now there's two 300 amp hour battery banks. So why did I do this? When it comes to a large load, especially with the two multis, uh, by doing a, a split battery bank is you're going to divide your load into two. Basically half the load is going to go to one battery bank and the other half is going to the other bank. With one large bank, it's got to be able to handle all of that load. Um, so you've got to have even larger cables, whereas with being split, I can go with slightly two aught cables instead of having to make one large bank with four aught cables or larger or multiple four aught cables. Um, and then 
Another thing I added to this as well is MRBF fuses and as well as a battery disconnect. Because when I showed up here, there was no battery fusing and there was no battery disconnect. And the, actually these battery interconnect cables were undersized at one aught. And when that Xantrax inverter was charging them, they were getting hot. So it wasn't a good thing. Let me zoom in here and show you a couple of these things. All right, so here's a close up. So we now have one, two, three. So this is battery bank and this is battery bank. So the load comes in and basically it's gonna get divided between these two. He had one aught cables here. As I mentioned, they were getting hot. He now has two, two aught cables here. You can see here, there's now MRBF fuses for each battery bank. Previously, there was no fusing. And then I also installed a battery disconnect here. So if he needs to do maintenance on the batteries, he needs to shut down the system in a hurry, he's got a battery disconnect right here. Previously, no battery disconnect. All right, so the batteries are over here. There's some 4 aught cable that goes through this bay, which then connects to the Lynx distributor, which then goes to the two multis. And then a one more bay over is where the solar equipment is located. So two solar charge controllers, which he had previously installed, the solar disconnects. And then I added in the generator auto start stop box that I sell. So his the Victron system can now fire up the generator. Um, based on the conditions that he has set and then we have the servo gx interestingly enough he has decided to go headless in a way which means that there's no touch screen on the inside um, but rather he just uses his ipad to connect to it all right let me show you one more thing here and i know someone's going to think it i know someone's going to put a comment that doesn't watch this video and that is well, what about all that heat? Because yes, we have two multi plus twos and when they're running, uh, in, they're so inverting, they put out some heat. And yes, when they put out heat and they get too hot, they start derating their output. So the question is, is well, how do we keep them cool? So it is a small space. It is gonna heat up. There's, that's just the nature of the beast. But what I did to help was, you can't really see, but on this back wall here, uh, in between the, the multis is I put a 12 volt cooling fan and what that fan is going to do is try to suck some of that hot air from inside here and vent it into this av empty cavity uh, behind me. I've talked to the customer as well about putting maybe some additional like vents on the door which you can see he's done on that door already to help improve airflow. All right, so that is this upgrade I did on this 2007 Newmar All-Star. Again, it's a mid-engine diesel, which is unique, and it's also a toy hauler, which is very unique. The first one I've seen. The challenge that provides is there's not a lot of underbay storage. So he has 2,000 watts up on the roof. Um, he now has two multi-plus, uh, two inverters, chargers. So that's 2,400 watts on each hot leg and he's got 600 amp hours of battery and he's got the Servo GX. He now has, I installed the generator start stop integration between the Victron system and his Onan generator. Um, tested that, that's working well. So customer's happy, another successful build out for a client. If you're looking to have a system installed, upgraded, improved, changed, uh, my details will be in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel because it lets me know that you guys are watching these videos and you like to watch these videos. So I appreciate all of you and thank you very much. Have a blessed day.